I think your girl was sticking the key in the wrong little, little keyhole. <laughs> yep. So I got the 16 mega roll for Angel Saw. And they got the 16 mega roll for 10.56. You get a dollar off coupon, nine dollars for this pack. That's not bad. That's a pretty good deal, y'all. It's a pretty good deal. I'm not mad at you. Give it a taste test. It's hot. No. Give it a taste test. First, look how white that meat is. Oh, that looks so good. Give it a taste test. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's good. But um, today is Saturday. I'm so glad it's the weekend, honey. This work week has been a little bit exhausting, but we made it through it. Um, today I'm up early because I have to go to an eye appointment. My eyes have been bothering me. Sometimes I feel like I can see. Sometimes I feel like I can't see. So we need to go get that checked out. Um, but my appointment is not until 11.20, so I'll probably leave sometime in the 10 o'clock hour to make it there. I'll probably be there a little early because I tend to end up everywhere a tad bit early, so I'll probably be there, be there a little early, but, um... We'll make it there. And then after that, I had promised one of, my, one of my friend girls that I was gonna try to link up with her. So I'm gonna see if I can link up with her and see if there's anything that she really wanna do today. And this is that one friend girl that I went and had brunch with a few episodes back. Who, who was one of the wives of the motorcycle club that my ex was in. So we may link up and, and see what's going on. I finally folded those clothes, y'all. <laughs> I finally got those clothes folded, honey. I don't know why I was dreading it. I think for me, and to be honest with you guys, when I'm fold, washing and folding clothes, I got to fold my clothes as soon as I get them out the dryer, because I love the touch of the heat, right? I love how it feels when it hot, it's hot, the clothes is warm. If I let them clothes sit and they get cold, it's just, uh, I don't want to touch them until I have to put, put them on me. It's a weird thing, but I got them folded, so I know I need to straighten up my house a little bit. I still have like my GoPro and camera sitting down from when... I did my mom's um, wine tour. I need to put that up. And um, I ordered some painting with a twist stuff from Amazon. And that finally came. But Amazon kind of pissed me off on, on the cool because... They brought some of my order to my door and then they took the rest of it to my to my uh, mailbox thing. And the key that they left off in there for me to get my order, I'm unable to get it. So for some reason the key is not working. So if I don't if I don't get my order, I'm gonna go ahead and call Amazon, tell them I didn't make it. I don't care if it is in that uh mailbox repository. I don't care because technically it's not at my front door <laughs> in my opinion. But I got that and I think it's really cute. 
I bought it actually for the family, not for me. Um, as you guys know, you may not know, I'm, I'm a planner. Like, I'm always planning things. And I'm always planning things far ahead, right? Because I, wanna, I want whatever I plan to come into fruition successfully. So, I feel like I'm a visionary. Um, because when I set my mind on something, it happens because I plan it out. But I am, <clears throat> had talked to my cousins about, and my sisters and stuff about doing a uh, cabin trip for the holidays for my mom and dad. So that's why I actually got that painting with the twist stuff. So if everything work out correctly, then y'all won't be seeing it until the holidays. But um, <laughs> that's funny. Y'all won't see it until the holidays. Uh, but what I liked about them is that they're Afrocentric. And you guys know I love me some Afrocentric art. You could see it all over my house. Um, so definitely looking forward to um, sipping some wine and, and painting on those when we get an opportunity to do so. Yeah, this coffee is good. It's hot, but it's good. Uh, so my cousin turned me on to this movie called On Tubi. Do y'all watch Tubi? Because uh, 2024, baby, Tubi been coming out with the heavy hitters, honey. If you ain't watched it. But um, my cousin sent me a text message. She was like, "Have y'all y'all both like Tubi? Watch this movie called Who? Right, so there's this movie on Tubi called Who, and it's the craziest movie ever, in my opinion. Tubi got some crazy movies, but the twist to this movie was quite shocking to me because um, it starts off where two friend girls or going out on a date and there's one friend girl that's so passionate about, you know, the other friend girl. Um, uh, meeting a guy. She was extremely passionate about that. So when they went out on a date, she did. But throughout the movie, the friend girl who was pushing... And they were actually cousins. Let me let me just say that. They were actually cousins. Who was pushing the other girl to meet the guy. Um, was getting envious. Of that relationship. And what gets me is that. Uh, I tell y'all. I tell y'all. I'll, I'll speak women empowerment all day. Because I, I just think women are. Are the strongest beings on this earth. Honey. You can't tell me anything different. But. I also tell y'all that I'm not so oblivious to know that women can be messy. Now, we're talking about a movie, right? But, <laughs> honey, if y'all haven't seen Who on Tubi, they released it this year on 2024. Watch it. Watch it. If you have seen it, let me know in the comments, child, because it's funny. It, it was, yeah. It was, it was, honey. Because... When the good cousin realized what the bad cousin did to her, I don't know if I could have refrained from whooping her ass. Oh, or not. But, yeah, y'all watch the movie. Let me know what y'all think about it, because it, it's crazy. Um, if you haven't already seen it, let me know what you think. So, I'm going to toodle around my house for a little bit, and then I'm going to head out, and I will get with you guys in a few. Hey, y'all. So, I made it to the... Um, 
eye doctor and I'm here about 20 minutes early but look what I got y'all my Amazon box <laughs> child when I was leaving the house I went back by, by my mailbox and um I think your girl was sticking the key in the wrong little, little keyhole <laughs> Yep, but I got my I got my Amazon, so I, I'm sorry Amazon for talking shit stuff about you. I'm sorry, but this is what I got. I wanted to get a scale for my suitcase to see how much it weighs once I put all my stuff in it. I'm definitely gonna take a carry on on my trip, but I want this to see if I'm packing too much because I can't overpack. And then I got me a suitcase cover right i like to put suitcase covers on my on my suitcases so i got me a new one for my for my carry-on suitcase and we're gonna see how that go but i just wanted to tell y'all it was not amazon's fault it was my fault and i'm about to get up and run off into this vision source place and see if i can find any glass is anything that i want to replace my doches with what what i'll probably do is hold on to these and give me another pair and give me some more contacts. That's what I'm gonna do. Because I tend to, you know, I can wear these around the house and if I give me another pair, I can wear them when I'm out, whatever, whatever I feel. You know what I mean? So let me run off in here, do that. Um, and then I'll get back with y'all. Hello. So the girl made it home. My eye appointment went very well. They told me that my right eye is dominant, which is not unusual. I'm right-handed, so of course my right eye is going to be dominant, but they also said that my left eye is much more weaker than my right eye. And um, that's why it, it, when I was reading and stuff, it just felt like my eyes were just pulling. And then I would lose, you know, it, I would, it, it was just not working out for me. I can't explain it any better <laughs> than that. So... What they did was they prescribed me some test. They gave me some test con contacts where for a week where the right eye prescription is stronger than, I mean, not stronger. It's not as strong as the left eye prescription to see if they can bring that 2020 vision in, right, so I can see better. So, so far, so good. These are daily contacts. I'm going to have to pop them out throw them away every day and pop them back in for the testing part of it. The true test, honestly, is when I'm working all day on my laptop. That's when the true test is going to happen, if this is going to work out or not. And if, if it doesn't cause me any headaches or anything like that, towards the end of the week, I'll contact them back and we'll solidify this order. Now, if my eyes keep feeling tired like they do now, because they, they have been feeling extremely heavy, and tired since I left the eye doctor. Uh, if they feel like this towards the end of next week, that we're gonna have to go back to what, what I normally do, just put the same prescription in both eyes and I'll just have to pop in and out readers and all that kind of stuff. Cause th this is bothering me just a tad bit. But overall it went good. I did order me some new glasses. You guys will see those when they come in. Those actually have the exact same prescription as my existing Dolce glasses. So what I'll probably do is when I'm wearing my glasses is switch those in and out depending on what I'm wearing, right? Whatever it goes best with. So, but I can't wait to get those in. I just kind of fell in love with those glasses. And then when I left the um, doggone doctor's appointment i found out and, and i knew this for a couple of weeks but i had to go find it so sax um for those of you who live in the austin metropolitan area who are austinites or currently reside here know that sax is currently in the arboretum you can find sax in the arboretum well sax recently opened up an off fifth store off of Capitol Texas Highway in 183. 
And what they do is, is when they're ready to mark down their clothes for that season, like extremely mark them down, they push them over to this off fifth store. So everything in that store is like 70% off. I found some really, really cute things, but I only walked out with um, these Marc Jacobs shades. Honey, I thought these was cute because it matched my outfit. <laughs> anyway, and plus my eyes was bothering me, so I was trying to protect them from the sun. But <clears throat> I got these shades, these Marc Jacobs. This is the case that comes with them. Um, for $119. And apparently, I saved $135. Can y'all see that? When buying these shades. So... That tells me that the shades were, what, about $260 regular cost. So I, I think that was a pretty good, pretty good saving. I also found um, this cute short set, honey. It's one of those um, winter suit, tweed-like material short sets, you know what I'm saying? I thought it was super cute. I was definitely going to get it, right? The jacket was on sale for $99. The shorts was on sale for $69. It fit okay because typically, like, I typically wear a medium. Whatever I get, I, I'll get a medium in. But keep in mind, a Mrs. medium is, is smaller than a woman's medium. So I think this was a woman's medium. So... <clears throat> When I was trying it on, it fit me kind of big, which that's okay because I don't need to be walking around like I got on some hooshy shorts anyway. Um, and not big, but it wasn't like fitting to my body. But it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, she probably shouldn't have that on because it's too big. It, not that at all. But the thing that bothered me was that the zipper kept sticking on the jacket. So I asked the lady, I was like, um... Is this zipper broke? And she said, well, this is how it's supposed to zip. And I was like, well, I don't care how much you guys knocked off of it, but I'm not finna pay $99 for a jacket and the zipper is gonna stick on me. I say, so let me go back and see if they got a small. Now the small, since it was a woman's, would have probably fit me a little bit snugger. Um, but I was going to try it on. By the time I got back to the rack, the smalls were gone. And literally, the smalls was there when I picked up my medium. So I don't know what happened in that whole situation. So I came back and I told her, I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to leave it here. And she tried to talk me into buying the jacket and taking it somewhere else to get it fixed after I spent my little hard-earned monies over it. And I said, no, uh, what you can do it's not the price off a little bit more, and I'll take it home. But since they weren't willing to do that, you know, I have to leave it at the store. So that's what I bought today on my little shopping spree. And then I ran over to Nordstrom's Rack because, as you all know, Nordstrom's Rack is the, is the markdown for Nordstrom's, right? And I didn't really find anything in Nordstrom's Rack this time. Um... Which is shocking because I love me some Nordstrom Rack. But I think it was just too many people off in there. So typically when I go to Nordstrom Rack or, or Ross or TJ Maxx or anything around them areas of things, I go when it's early so it's not so many people off in there. There was a lot of people off in there. So it was just giving me the heebie-jeebies. So I didn't stand there long. And then when I left that spot, <clears throat> I went to the market. And pick me up some sushi. That's actually what I'm about to eat now because the girl is is <clears throat> definitely hungry. I'm gonna put my little sushi on this plate and um get my heat on. Probably rest a little bit since my since my eyes are bothering me. But I wanted to just check back in with you guys, let you know how things went, which was not too horrible. And then um, I'm going to sit down 
and watch this little freak neat documentary that they have on Hulu. My daughter was telling me about, so I'm gonna sit down and watch that and see <laughs> see what that's all about, and probably doze off, rest my eyes a little bit, and um, I'll get back with you guys soon. Hey, young world. <clears throat> Happy um, Sunday, child. It's early. Um, I'm about to run by the grocery store. I'm not going to pick up much because um, my factory meals are supposed to come in at the beginning of the month. So I'm just going to pick up a few things before it gets too crowded in the HEB. It's about 642 for real. Um, outside. So... I like to get there early. You guys know why, but anyway, I'm gonna take you guys with me and show you guys what I would typically buy at the H E B, especially if I'm not gonna not gonna um get much. But keep in mind I ain't brought no list. And <laughs> I'm horrible about that, but um we're gonna try to stay on a task and not not go too out of control. So let's see what we can do.
So I got the 16 mega roll for Angel Saw. And they got the 16 mega roll for 10.56. You get a dollar off coupon, nine dollars for this pack. That's not bad. That's a pretty good deal, y'all. It's a pretty good deal. I'm not mad at you. So when I talk about I keep like moist wipes in my bathroom, this is the kind I use. They flushable. So when you know you do the number, you can wipe your butt, keep your butt clean. But I use these. I have them in every bathroom in my home. So they're about a dollar ninety-seven a piece. And you can get the economy box for 540 wipes for $13.98. You know, if your household is <laughs> if your household is that big, but yeah. Gabe <clears throat> for five bucks. I'll just re refill the tube that I currently have. And then I need some Clorox spray to clean my my toilets and clean my uh, my tub and stuff. I'm gonna have to take one out of my daughter's book and start going to the <laughs> Dollar General for my cleaning product. So the Clorox disinfectant spray that I like to use. Four seventy-eight. For some reason I thought they were much cheaper than this. But yeah, they're four seventy-eight. And then the um toilet bowl stuff is like two dollars and sixty-eight cents a piece. So I guess I'll get one of those too. This is just me. When my babies come home during the summer, I'll probably have to get more. But for now, that should. Child, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I need some glade refills. I tell y'all, this is why my grocery bills be so high. These things, you get five for 11 bucks. <clears throat> $11.98. These things right here. And then, um, I like to get Fusion for my house as well, and those are like two dollars and two dollars a piece. But in order to use these, you have to have a lamp to go with them, and the lamp has to have a have a light. So you get two fruit fusion lights for three forty eight. I have lamps at home, so let me get these things you do to make sure you have smell good. That's what our basket is looking like. We got it all in the little basket. So that's good. So we're going to see. I didn't get no crab legs. 
anything like that. I just got the the fish. Lots of vegetables, lots of fruits, hygiene products, paper towels and tissues, some eggs. Not too bad, so we're gonna see. I'll let y'all know how much damage I did once we get outside. This is what I mean by picking up stuff I don't need. I saw these little Easter color tumblers with straws and tops. And they got little plates to go with them. I'm getting that for my grandkids for when they come over and eat with me so they won't have to use my good stuff. <laughs> anyway, we finna check out now, y'all. Okay, young worm. We in the car about to head home, right? <clears throat> so they say today we spent uh, two fifty four eighty three. We saved two bucks because remember we had those two coupons, one for the butter and one for the um, tissue paper. So uh, two fifty four eighty three. My factory meals are supposed to start coming in on. Um, April 1st so if I have to go back to the store just for little things um, it, it's likely I will have to I didn't get any juices today predominantly um, fruits and vegetables cleaning product and, and two packs of protein so um, we'll go back through the list when I get home and, and see what the heavy hitters were and it looks like just at a glance the protein shake I purchased and the um, my coffee the vanilla cups that I like as well as the fish that I purchased those were the heavy hitters on my list. And the fish I purchased was like 38 bucks for the two proteins. Um, everything else was like $10 or less. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's just, I keep telling y'all, it's so expensive. I had mentioned in, um, in a previous previous vlog in January I want to say I spent $700 on groceries because I was going back every week <clears throat> and it wasn't intentional it wasn't intentional um, so in February I spent $400 on groceries this is my first time back to the grocery stores picking up groceries since the beginning of February it's almost the end of March now so I had quite a bit of stuff in my house, but if you think about those two months at the grocery store, that's like eleven, twelve hundred dollars on groceries for one person. So I'm hoping that when I get these factor meals, it kind of like helps me cut back and I don't be spending as much when it comes to groceries. I know that my diet plays a huge part of it because seafood is very expensive. Um, but I don't know. I'm trying to figure out something, y'all. But stay tuned. I'm home, y'all. And I think I, I stay corrected because I probably have been back to the store. I was thinking about that <clears throat> on the drive home. I think I have been back to the store to pick up a, like very few things. Like whenever I run out of coffee or something like that, I'll run into the store. But what I meant by that was that I haven't been grocery shopping. Like I haven't purchased any gro groceries since the beginning of March. Like at, at a huge haul. That's what I mean. I don't want to, you know, I, I try to be very honest about things that I say and do. So, yeah, I haven't been back to get a substantial haul but to pick up like coffees and I want to say that's what I got coffee and cream I did go back to the store so anyway I'm about to put up these groceries first thing I do like I always say is I clean out my refrigerator 
before I put stuff in my refrigerator. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this little trash can on over here. And what I feel like needs to be removed is going to be removed. I bought these watermelon cubes. <clears throat> yes, see, that's an example of what I'm talking about. Turn this around so y'all can see it a little bit. These look, yesterday when I went and got the, uh, the sushi from the market, I bought these little watermelon triangles to, to chew on because I wanted to, and I've only eaten one thus far. Um, so I'm gonna have to finish those off before they go bad. These dosekis, can y'all see that? If them little dosekis off in there, child, them been in there for, I don't even know if, if they go bad. I have no idea. Oh. They do. <laughs> they have an expiration date on. Me and my sister was talking about that. And I need to throw those out because they are really past due. I didn't know beer went bad. I just thought they got, I didn't know they had an exp expiration date on them. So I need to get those out of my refrigerator because they've been in there since, uh, I separated from my ex. That's why they're there. And typically when my youngest daughter comes back into town, she'll slip on a couple of dos equis, so I'll have that them there. But I think when she comes in next time, I'm going to have a fresh batch of them for her. Because we're going to go on and get rid of these. And, um... Uh, because I'm tired of looking at them anyway. <laughs> Myself. Cause I know I'm not gonna drink it because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do the yeast around my belly. Um, I don't know why I bought some more of this and I had a whole thing in my refrigerator. I bought this, let me see. Well, this has an expiration date too, so I'll just throw that out. Um, I'll pull this out, throw that out too. But I bought that because of. I was supposed to make the whole yeah. the whole mushroom with um it tastes like hot wings before and I didn't. Right? I'm gonna shut that for a few minutes so it stopped being. And I didn't. So I'm gonna try to show y'all what I'm talking about this time around. Hopefully I won't take too long to do it. Give me one sec. So anyway, y'all. I'm in the process of cleaning out this refrigerator. It looks like it's gonna rain today. It's so, it's, the overcast is serious, right? Outside. So it definitely looks like it's gonna rain, do something. They talking about it's a high chance tomorrow, but I, I think we're gonna get something today. And y'all know I'm nosy, child. <laughs> y'all know I am nosy. So I think my neighbor's next door. The door, um the um Caucasian family. I think they I think they moving because they were actually leasing that place over there. And their move was sudden. I don't know what happened, child. I don't know if the, the people that they was leasing for went up on rent and stuff. But what I found out, which is interesting, is that, you know, all these people moving to Texas and don't know, like, the homestead laws and stuff like that. And the only reason why I say that is because when, when my car was in the shop, when I took my car to the shop, um, I was speaking to one of the one of the people who was who was my Uber driver who took me back to get my car. He actually lives in my community. And he was saying how 
he was leasing as well. He was like, the taxes are so high and um, it's so expensive to live in Austin. And he said that he moved from California to Houston to Austin. He said he couldn't stay in Houston because Houston was just too muggy. It was just... He just couldn't, it was just too much going on for him. So he moved to Austin. And I was like, well, yeah, I was like, oh, Houston is fast paced money. Um, much faster than Austin. But Austin is got got some price tags on it. So anyway, the point I was trying to make is that a lot of these people moving into the state of Texas don't know the homestead laws. And so I was telling him, I was like, well. I say, did you know that you can get discount on your taxes? It's not a substantial amount of discount, but it's, it's a discount. You know what I'm saying? And he looked at me like, well, what are you talking about? I say, well, if you, if you own a homestead, and even if you have two homesteads, but one is your primary, on your primary homestead, you can file for homestead exemption. And what homestead exemption does is it uh, the, the taxes that are uh, set up in your, the area that you live in, whether it's school, um, whether it's um, building, you know, all the taxes they put together that they hit you with when you purchase a home. All that stuff, they knock percentages off of it. So a great example would be when I purchased my home, I purchased, and I talked about this a little bit on a, a video when I said how expensive it is to move to Texas. Um, when I purchased my home, my rent, my, my mortgage was less than the rent that I paid on a two bedroom, two bath, bath um, luxury apartment that I was staying in. The luxury apartment I was staying in was two, bed, two full bedrooms, two baths. Um, I had a garage and a cover court for, for my vehicles and I was paying like $2,300 a month to stay there. So when I moved, when I built my home and moved off into it, my mortgage was like almost It, my mortgage was like $2,100 when I first moved into my house. And I was like, oh, this is a win, honey. So, after I stay here a year, they reevaluate your homes, right? Everybody know that. They're going to reevaluate your home. And when they reevaluate your home, they're going to tax you at what that home actually costs in that neighborhood based off what's going on around you and what's growing and all that kind of stuff. When my taxes went up, $15,000 a year, right? And that ain't cheap. And that's why I say, depending on where you live in the Austin metropolitan area, whatever county you live in, the taxes for your homestead is different taxes. It's a different tax amount. Um, apparently, my community can be is, is very pricey, but some of the homestead taxes can can be well 16 17,000 a year. If you find file homestead exemption for that county, you can save to at least $2,000 or something. Something like that. And you know, I'm always looking at a bargain, I'm always looking at a savings. So my my point is a lot of people come to town to move into Texas and don't understand the state laws. So these people who's living over here, the guy who owns this home that they was leasing probably went up on their lease to cover the taxes because the taxes went up, right? I even know the taxes went up, <laughs> but it didn't hit me as hard because I followed my homestead. So it, my, my shit is kind of balancing out. These people probably didn't know about the homestead exemption or, or has a primary home that they're claiming the exemption on. Therefore, this home is getting taxed out of the wazoo. So they probably went up on the lease over here and, and need, that's why these people are moving. Um, I just 
saw a U-Haul truck and all this other stuff. So I don't know if both have moved out or if all of them are moving. But, you know, my shoe, nah, 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 is telling me it's both of them. Because they, they kind of cleaned up some of the garden stuff around the house and all that kind of stuff. So, we gonna see, child. We gonna see if they are truly gone. Or... They went through another breakup because they not married. They uh, they girlfriends and boyfriends written together. So we're gonna see how it all turns out. This is the same one where I'll be standing outside talking to the dude, and I, I refer to the woman as his wife because they do live together. And you know, out of respect, but they they not married. Not at all. Um. But. So yeah, now I'm just putting up my. Putting up my groceries. Getting this stuff going. And then I'm going to see. Um. What I plan to do next. Ain't got much going on. I probably need to wash some more clothes because it's a new week and it just makes sense for me to do so. And I probably need to uh, keep on straightening up because I didn't do that I needed to do around the house. I never went anywhere once I made it back from the eye appointment yesterday. I had told you guys that I was probably going to hook up with that little girl, that the, the young, my friend girl. I say little girl. So it's hateful. Um, my friend girl, I had said that I was probably going to hook up with her. I didn't, y'all. My eyes were so tired. I just wanted to just get on my couch and, and rest, and that's what I did. Um, her and I texted a little bit, and she was like, Miss Jules, you didn't, you didn't call me, are you okay? And I told her, I said, no, nah. I said, yeah, I'm okay. I've been home for a little bit, but my eyes are really heavy and stuff, you know, because they did the full eye exam, dilation and all, so I probably shouldn't have been driving home <laughs> in general, but me being me, I don't like to, if I don't have to call on my body, I, I, I won't. And I need to get better at that. But, um, probably shouldn't have been driving by myself with all that. Cha! Oh. With all, with all that going on. But, my eyes was definitely feeling heavy. And I was like, no, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to do a rain check and reschedule or something because I'm not gonna, I'm not in in that spirit right now to go anywhere. I just want to rest my arms and that's what I did. So today, they're actually feeling much better. And as y'all can see, I ain't got no contacts in my eyes. And I ain't finna put them back off in my eyes until tomorrow. Keep my glasses on. <laughs> I'll put them back in tomorrow. We'll see how things go with the, with how they want to do those contacts and stuff. I mean, I could honestly see much better than what I could in my prior contacts. But, um, I don't know. It takes some getting used to. It definitely does. It takes some getting used to. get this stuff done and um I will get with you guys
Hey y'all. So, so far we got the food put up <clears throat> and everything. This is what the fridge is looking like inside. All my vegetables and fruits. So today I think I'm going to make me, grill me or saute me some. I'm going to cook me some. <laughs> so funny. I'm going to cook me some catfish. But I'm going to cook it in a skillet on top of the stove. I'm going to grill it, um, so to speak, in a skillet. Like, fry it. That's what I'm saying. Like, do do a pan sear, pan fry of it without any flour. Just some olive oil and stuff. And then I'm going to eat it with some jasmine. On, I'm going to eat it on top of some jasmine rice and um, spinach. That's what today's meal is going to be. So, um I'll probably walk y'all through cooking that meal. I'm going to use two pieces of catfish. So when I was at the grocery store, I purchased catfish and salmon. Um, I got four fillets of catfish and one nice size salmon. So um, I'm thinking that's the plan for today. Um, and then I... I'm gonna do that in a in a few. It's still a little bit early. It's only 9:15, so I'm actually gonna make me a cup of coffee and um, put up all my cleaning product and stuff, and put my little scents and stuff around the house that has burnt out. And then I'm gonna um, relax for a few. Then I'll probably jump back on. But this will probably be a girl talk, not a girl talk, a living single over 50 episode um, versus a girl talk and I'm gonna try to get this episode published tonight um, today sometime probably sometimes in the evening but I'll get it done um, anyway I will get with you guys in a few um, and we'll look at how I make this catfish All right, young world. Child, I didn't, uh, had me a cup of coffee. I sat down and I watched <clears throat> church on TV, and now I'm about to cook my food. So let's, let's talk about my diet and my, it's not really a diet, and my, my eating habits. So, one, um, I would say that I am not much as a finicky eater as my daughters are. I'm really not. Uh, my daughters are very finicky. The, the majority of my family is finicky when it comes to food. Um, but for those of you that don't know, I'm a pescatarian. So, <clears throat> I haven't had beef nor pork. Dang, I want to say I haven't had beef in over a decade. And I haven't had pork in almost six years. It's been a long time. It's been a while. And then um, I actually stopped eating chicken on my birthday this year. And it's so funny because I talked to my daughter I'm like, if I crave anything, I love me, I, I would, I, child, I love me some hot wings. Like, I love me some flats and some hot wings. So, I would say if, if I miss anything about eating chicken, it would be those flats, right? Because I slowly weaned myself off of chicken. I stopped, I got food poison a few years back from eating chicken from Popeye's. And it had me in the hospital. So, when that happened... I was like, no, I'm not going to eat no Popeye's, no churches, no, none of that that has to do with fast food chicken joints. Didn't do. Um, but I would um, give me the flats on some hot wings. Love them. So, I haven't had chicken since my birthday, since chicken at all since my birthday. So now all I eat is vegetable, fruits. And um, starch and seafood. That's all I eat. 
Um, many people would say that um, since I eat once, once a day, pretty much, I do intermediate fasting. I don't even call it that. So when I say I eat once a day, you guys notice when I get on in the morning, typically all I have is coffee. That's all I do is drink liquids the majority of the time when I have breakfast. If I eat a breakfast, it's an extremely light breakfast. It's fruit. I may do avocado toast, something like that, but it's never really anything heavy um, for breakfast. So, uh... Pancakes, French toast, all that kind of stuff. If I'm at home, I try to steer away from cooking anything like that for myself. Now, if I'm in a different city or something like that, it, it's, it's going to be different, baby. I'm going to eat like I ain't never ate before because I typically eat a lot when I'm away. Um, and then for lunch or brunch, if I don't have, like this morning, I didn't have anything, just liquids. So it's about 12.30 now. I'm about to make my my um, catfish and stuff. So for brunch, which it would be by the time I eat, um, if I eat a hearty brunch or what I consider a hearty, hearty brunch, after I eat it, I'll probably have fruit later if I get hungry. That's why I have so much fruit in my refrigerator. Um, so, I try to make sure my meals are balanced. So, today I'm going to do me, do my catfish, right? Then, I've already took the stems off of my, my um, organic spinach. So, I'm going to cook the spinach once the rice finished boiling. <clears throat> I don't eat white rice unless I get me some Chinese food or something like that. And you all know that fried rice is not brown rice, it's, it's white rice with stuff on it. But when I go to the grocery store, this is this is my favorite rice. It's brown jasmine rice. This is what I eat. Um, so I'm gonna cook this first, let it boil, let it get soft. And then once it boils and all the water cooks out of it, then I'll add my spinach to it, right? Um, something funny is that my children, <laughs> my oldest child, let me say that, because my youngest child, she, she typically loves my cooking. But my oldest child say I don't put enough seasoning in my food. So, and you'll see why. The um, water, I have water. And I have some butter over here, getting the water hot. Those, um, those who don't know, I use country crop plant-based plant butter. That's what I choose to um, cook with and eat with. If I use any oil, I use extra virgin olive oil. So this is what I'm going to use to cook my fish in. Um, I have the water and the butter boiling, and I'm going to add some kosher salt to the water and butter while that's boiling before I put my rice off in there. Then, since the white rice is going to take a little bit longer to cook, I'm going to add my rice. I'm not measuring anything. I just pour it off in there to my, to my life, and if it's too much, um, I'll put it up and eat it tomorrow. So I just pull it off in there. Since the water, whoop, since the water is hot. And, um, I'm going to let that cook. Let that boil and cook and everything. And stick this back in my refrigerator. Rice and stuff, I have to, uh, my rice and stuff is, is boiling in this, in this pot. And I'm going to start heating up my, my olive oil. I hope you guys can see me from this direction. And then I'll probably adjust y'all again. I have to adjust y'all from over here to over here. So y'all can see a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to put that olive oil off in there. Just at the bottom. 
this I don't measure anything. I just put it in. So that that's probably a tablespoon um, worth of olive oil. Scoot it around the pan. Let that get nice and warm. And while that's getting nice and warm, I'll um, season my fish. So my, I make sure my fish is dry. Like I'll, I'll dab it with some, with some doggone paper towels on both sides. Make sure they're extremely dry. I've already washed my hands, guys. Um, and then I'm gonna put some obey on it on my fish, and I'm gonna season both sides of my fish, not just one, both sides. Put some lemon pepper. Then I'm gonna put some little Cajun, some Cajun seasoning on there. I'm not gonna put any salt on my fish because I feel like the seasonings that I've just used has salt in them, in my mind. So I'm just gonna flip them over and do the same thing to the other side. Right? Same thing, just get them seasoned real good. It's my little napkin I was using to when I wash my hands and stuff, get that out y'all way. I hope y'all see me, see this, what I'm doing. Can y'all see the fish? Let me narrow it that out. Hope y'all can see the fish. Yeah. Just season both sides. So I put the obey on. I put the Cajun on this side. So now I'm going to put the lemon pepper on this side. No salt. That's it. That's the seasoning. So now this skillet should be hot enough. And how I test that is by... With my fingertips and dropping some water in there. And if it starts doing a fizzy thing, that means it's hot enough. Since I didn't hear a fizz, I'm going to let it warm up a little longer. So I think it's warm enough now. This skillet should be big enough for me to place both of my fishes in. Um, I'm going to put the top part down first. Because to me, that's where, to me, that's where the majority of the fatty meat is, right? And then I'm going to put the other one right next to it. I'll let that cook. Bring y'all a little closer so y'all can see. My rice is doing what it's doing. And both my fish it off in that skillet right so we're gonna let that cook a little bit all right y'all so this is how our rice is looking it's quite a bit rice can y'all see that it's quite a bit of rice but that's how the rice is looking so it, it looks pretty good I ain't mad at it. And this is how the fish is looking. So I've already flipped it once. Right? And I'm going to uh, let it cook on that side for a little bit. But it's, it's looking good. So I just let it cook in there and... Um, cook a little bit on the opposite side. Now, once the water, once the water cooks out of the rice completely, I'm going to turn it down a little bit so it can start simmering. But once the water gets out of the rice completely, I'm going to add the spinach to it, right? But I need that water to go on and 
get out of there first because I don't want I don't want to add my spinach before that. And then I'm also one of those type of people who like to try to keep the kitchen clean while I cook. <laughs> so um, I moved everything that I am no longer using away. I kept the seasoned salt out because once I put the spinach off in the rice, I'll add a little seasoned salt. Right, to top it off. Once my fish finish, then I'll plate everything and then I'll show you guys what I'm working with. Alright. Okay guys, so <clears throat> the majority of the water is now out the rice, right? And it's on extremely low because I don't want my rice to burn. I've turned my fish for the second time back onto the, the top part and the question may be, well how do you know if it's ready? Look how white that is in there. And plus it's falling apart. That's how I know it's ready. Right? So what I'm going to do now, I have to get a bigger spatula that's back there to, to, to flip it over. Because when, when your fish start falling apart, it's typically saying, uh, you're doing too much, get me out of here. Type thing. So I'm going to now, let y'all look closer, add my spinach to my rice, right? I'm just going to put it off in there and just mix it up. And your spinach, because of the type of vegetable it is, it's going to, it's going to, well, you know, get, um, I want that spinach back in my bowl. They're going to get soft and everything while they're in the rice. Let me plate my food, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Is the spinach cooked? Yeah, because it don't take much, right, for the spinach to for, for spread, fresh, spread, fresh spinach to cook. So, see that? See how it cooks down? And that's your jasmine rice and spinach, right? So, let me plate. And I'll show y'all what I'm working with. I put some of that jasmine rice and spinach on my on my plate. And now I'm just going to season that individually. And just cover it with some season salt. A little season salt on there. And then I'm going to put my fish fillet on top. So my fillet did exactly what I didn't want it to do was break apart. But that's the final result, right? Put you guys down. Let me give it a taste test. It's hot. No. Give it a taste test. First, look how white that meat is. Oh, that looks so good. Give it a taste test. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's good. Home. It's one o'clock. Sorry, that's rude. It's one oh nine now. I'll eat this today. <clears throat> later, I'm gonna. I, I'll likely get hungry a little later. But if I do, I'll likely will eat a grapefruit or some berries or some of that water watermelon that I have in there. Or I may make me a little smoothie full of fruit. Um, but that's typically what I eat and how I eat. And so, I don't know. Try it, you guys. It's not bad. It actually tastes really, actually tastes really good. And I know a lot of people in, are not a fan of catfish. But this here, baby. Mm. 
excellent.